white first? Yeah. Let's go I white, think white first. first. Oh, no, 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 no. It's almost ready. From Panhan, uh, I'm a queer artist and a first-generation immigrant. I work, live, play with respect and gratitude on the stolen lands and occupied territories of the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, and Squamish nations. And I aspire to use my voice and my art to raise awareness and to bring more light to the truth. Uh, so in the past I had worked um, for culture days when I lived in Calgary. Um, and then this year, one of my coordinators from Calgary um, sent me a link to this project and they told me, hey, like, I think you should apply for this. And when I read through it, I thought that it's really something that can resonate and hold space for what I have to say. Um, yeah, and then I applied. <laughs> My practice has changed so much through the years. Um, the first medium that I felt really drawn to was photography, and when I was 15 years old, it's what I picked up. Um, I think it helped me so much to feed my like observing part. Ever since, I kind of have always been playing with different mediums and materials to see um, what can translate my voice best, almost and also just have fun with it and not get into like a repetitive practice. So I have worked with um, different materials like photography, collages, I do some pottery. Um, I started like doing pottery and clay in 2020 when the pandemic started and I just had this chunk of clay at home from like before and I was like, from my workplace and I was like hmm maybe I'll try like to do something and I started sculpting then I found out it has so much more depth to it than if I'm painting because I also paint uh, <laughs> from the very beginning my intention of creating art wasn't to create this only beauty you know and it was more like to create um, and then as it went I realized that it's so powerful and I can use it to influence perspectives and change um, ideas about certain contexts. I really wanted to do something larger like a mural and finally like this time when I talked to Nazanin, my coordinator, about like what possible projects I can do to activate the community. Um, we initially thought about like doing a, a large painting but like on a canvas but then as we went um, we were just lucky to come by like a wall and be able to actually do a mural. Just like communicating like to different community partners to see um, what kind of opportunities are out there in terms of like location, where, where should we hold this activity, where should we engage the community. Um, and then somehow it all led to, to Granville Island and being able, they were very generous and supportive of the project. They're like, yeah, we're going to support you through this project. Um, yeah, and they gave us a wall.
Yeah, A Path to Survival is the title of my Earth Endeavors activity. I'm hoping that it can bring awareness to how we are impacting other species and the land, as well as planting some seed of love and hope for the future generations to come. So I think I decided that theme to be very joyful and bright. Um, as I respond to the location that was selected for us, which was the kids market. And I thought that this could be a really good opportunity if I can um, plant some interest um, in kids for like for other species and to just like if I created any interest um, um, by bringing that, I thought that is something that is still could be impactful in the future. I think when I learned that it's going to be by the kids market, I tried to channel, <clears throat> like channel my own childhood and be like, what would I have wanted to see on a wall? And like, what would have made me happy if I saw it? And then that helped me like more to come up to this image with the numbers around like extinction and what is happening to other species um, that is quite alarming. I wanted um, to have a representation of them there, you know, because like we don't know like for how much longer we are able to see these species for real, you know, to kind of have um, a memorial for them almost. Like I said, like that idea of individualism and like when we operate from a place of ego and then we see ourselves separate from the world and other people as well as other species. Um, that, and that's where that disconnect happens. Uh, because also in communities or in cultures where it's more like tribal and people are more community based, they do have a specific traditions to celebrate the land, to celebrate other species, you know? Um, so it's about that, realizing that um, our very own life and existence does depend on other species as well. Um, and I mean, I come from a line of activists and um, I have paid so much attention to the injustice that humans go through for um, a lot of my life. But there was also a point for me where I realized that other species can't really stand up for themselves. 
They can talk, they can ask for what they need, and they can tell their stories and what has happened to them. And I think that really triggers some sort of compassion in me that makes me want to put more focus and attention there too. You know, like, um, and that disconnect that we have from other species, um, I think is causing a lot of the sufferings that we experience as humans. But then there is so much uh, invested into making, like disappearing that connection and making it go away, to make us disconnect from it. Something that was really, I had such an interesting moment with uh, when I was finishing up on the last day um, this woman came up to me and she was like I am 34 years old and I have been passing by this ugly ball <laughs> for 28 years so thank you so much for putting this art on it and now like every time I pass by this I will be so happy by looking at this and she just said this to me and left and I was I just sat there and I was like oh my goodness like you know, like, this is all I wanted from doing this. You do, there are, there's a ripple effect with this kind of, with any piece of art mm -hmm. that is incalculable, that it might mm. stick in someone's head for, for 30 years, or, you know, a kid might see it and experience it and associate it with that space mm -hmm. and never forget it. It's interesting because it's, like, located on this alley, um, that doesn't really have anything in it and it's kind of just like a pathway where people just pass through. But it was really interesting to see how many people like were stopping to see what is happening and just seeing something going on like that, it already activates conversation. Um, I, I saw people that were coming um, like multiple days and checking it out and they're like, oh, you made progress or they're like following up with it. And I think that really is what community is, you know, to, to show up and to check in. It was also a really interesting experience to, to share that with kids, to share the piece and let them paint and like have fun with it because I think it's something that is um, not very achievable if you're a kid like it's something that we all want to do as a kid to paint on a wall but it's like a no-no <laughs> and then to kind of just hold that a space for kids to have that experience it's also felt really rewarding for me and to see how they responded to it and reacted to it. Initially, I wanted to just like kind of like invite every like invite people to like do their research and learn about things like how much of this land like belong to indigenous people, how much of it do they own now, what are the polluters, you know, like it's a lot of thing to be put in a little footage, right? So that I thought like I can just invite them to do that, to do their own research and learn more about like what is happening around us. Because we as humans like tend to, when we feel a level of comfort, then we tend to forget about everything else. And we forget about questioning things, we forget about educating ourselves about, about others, you know? So, yeah. I just wanted to invite. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. yeah.